I wish I could be like the other data science channels. I wish I could hop on here, tell you how one day I decided I wanted to be a data scientist, hopped online, found a course, and then five months later I was working as a data scientist for Amazon. But that's not what happened with me, that's not my story. I took a slower route that may be more realistic and may be the experience for most of us. But I can say that my journey shows that it's possible for anyone if they want to put in some work. I wasn't that person who as a kid was really good with computers and circuit boards and had all of this interest in it. In fact, I dropped my computers class before I even took it for GCSE. And the prospect of coding frightened me. In fact, I started a master's in sports science, but it had one module in coding. And that was part of the reason that I dropped out. I went to that class like two times and I completely panicked. And it wasn't the complete reason, but it was one of the reasons I decided to drop out. And frankly, if you told me a couple of years ago that I'll be a data scientist who has to do a fair bit of coding, I wouldn't have believed you. But I have just landed my first job as a data science intern, so I think it's proof that if you have a good mindset, even you can be, end up being a data scientist. So I'm going to share with you my complete journey of how I went from somebody who was terrified of coding to somebody who's now working as a data science intern at least. And hopefully by doing this, I can show you you don't have to become an elite data scientist in six months. But if you take it nice and slow, know your basics, and respect the craft of building brick by brick, you too could be a data scientist. So let's wind the clock back. Like most people who had just finished high school, I kind of knew what I wanted to study, but not really. I was deciding between becoming a sports physio or something like that, going into business, or this new field I'd heard about in data science. I ended up deciding to go down the sports physio route. But after graduating from that and working in that field for like three years, I wasn't happy with my job prospects, my potential pay, the cap of the pay that I could receive. And frankly, I couldn't see myself doing that for the rest of my life. But one thing that experience did teach me was that data was everywhere. It wasn't just in the financial market or within computing, as I would have assumed back then, but it was now even infiltrating the sports arena. So I realized that, yes, there is a lot of potential in this data thing that you were thinking about a few years ago. So I was like, yeah, you remember that data thing? It was more commonly called big data back then. I was like, yeah, you remember that big data thing? I wonder what's going on with that. Let's look into it. So I started to research it, and a lot of my research involved videos like this. I was watching videos just so I could find out as much about this data thing as I could. I saw videos from people who were self-taught and got employed. I saw videos from people who went to college and got employed. But the main thing I needed to know was how much programming is in this thing. Well, actually, I needed to know what is programming. It was just this ephemeral thing I had heard people say, I program, I code. I was just like, okay. But I didn't even know what exactly it was. And the other thing that had me a bit nervous was how much math was involved. So in high school, I had been decent at maths, but I didn't know if I could take it to that next level of university level maths. So that was another thing that I was very a bit scared of. But this was around the same time where I was having a shift in my mindset where I realized you could pick whatever topic and if you just put enough time and dedication into it, you will get pretty decent at it if you work hard enough. So I decided that, okay, this coding thing scares me, but if I put enough time and dedication into it, I can get pretty good at it. Same with maths and that's what data science involves a lot of. And because I'm somebody who likes to learn with structure around them, I decided, okay, I'm going to study a master's in data science and AI. But just one problem, the pandemic came around. So I had to defer starting my master's to the next year, which was 2021. But I didn't want to sit around like a couch potato the whole time. In my research, I'd seen a lot of people had self-taught themselves data science and didn't even go to uni to do so. So I was like, okay, I have an extra year here. I could self-teach myself as much of data science as I can, and then when I go to university, it would just be adding a little bit extra, just making sure that I have a strong foundation and uni could just be adding the extra garnish on top. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's get the best of both worlds, learning in a master's and self-teaching. So I hopped onto YouTube and initially I was just jumping from tutorial to tutorial, just trying to learn this thing. And as you can imagine, I didn't learn much at all. Because this tutorial would assume that you knew a little bit of this, but then this tutorial would assume that you knew a little bit of this. I needed somewhere where I could start from scratch, from zero to hero, as they say. <laughs> so I needed a plan of attack. First thing I looked into is what languages did I need to know? 
I ended up opting for SQL and Python. So I could learn it by watching one of those 11 hour videos, but I was like, uh, no, that probably won't work for me. I need structure. I could go on Coursera and do a course for like 40 bucks, but just like anyone else who had considered studying data or had even Googled the word data, I was inundated by ads from DataCamp of how it was the best platform to learn data science. It was a little bit more expensive at, I think it was around 150 back then, but I was like, okay, this looks well-structured. That's what I'm going to do. And by paying extra, I'll now be committed and will have to pay attention when I'm learning this stuff. So of course, I immediately enrolled into the Python for data scientists and SQL for data analysts courses. Anyway, fast forward a year, I start my master's and after having taken all these courses on data camp, I walk into the class a little bit confident being like, yeah, I have a good foundation. I've been doing my homework. I've been learning. And it didn't take long for me to realize I knew next to nothing. There's going to be a whole other video on why data camp taught me next to nothing. But all you need to know is I didn't know much at all. And I was beginning to wonder, is this coding thing for me? I've done this for a year and I still know nothing. But I was like, okay, let's do this master's. So needless to say, my master's had a lot of highs and lows. The theory part was pretty hard, but I could get there eventually, and I did. The math part, once I got into the hang of doing maths again, that was fine. But the coding, <sighs> the coding. It didn't take me long to realize that I'd been fooling myself for the whole past year, thinking I was learning stuff by being spoon-fed by these courses on data camp. But that wasn't the case. I hadn't learned how to think programmatically or algorithmically, which was possibly the most important skill rather than just knowing syntax. And the first time I got a programming assignment just emphasized this to me. I had never failed anything that co contributed towards a grade, but my first programming assignment, I got a 49, a fail, a fail. So I was thinking, is data, is data science right for me? Do I have to drop out? But that was only for three days before I got back on the horse. I was like, okay, I basically decided I need to treat myself like somebody who's learning from scratch again and went through everything step by step by step, brick by brick. And eventually I was able to pass the academic portion of my data science master's with a first, which is the highest grade, just by re-reshifting my mindset. And it's funny, just in the three to four month period where I decided that I'm going to relearn data whilst being in university, I learned more than I did in that whole year where I was on data camp. But the first part of my master's is academic, but the second part is an internship. So the other step in my data journey was applying for jobs. And here's the thing, I'd been doing sports science slash sports physio stuff, so I didn't have any transferable skills really. And my master's was a conversion master, so you didn't have to have done data science in your undergrad in order to do this. But a lot of the people who are part of it had done maybe web dev, they had done software engineering, maybe even just math, but it was stuff with transferable skills. So I did a few job applications with my CV just slightly tailored. Rejection, rejection, and let's be real, most of the times I didn't even hear back. So I realized that despite my undergrad and my work experience not being that related, I needed to, to mold my CV to emphasize the stuff that were related. Talk about the data analysis I had to do during my dissertation for my undergrad, collecting athlete data, learning how to feed back data in a way that's easy to understand for, for laymen, that sort of thing. Not directly related, but transferable skills of some sort. And I will be making a video on how you can make a good CV for data science, whether you have that as a background or you're coming from non-tech. But that was the situation I was in. But once I did fix my CV in that manner, it was I got like four interviews, and I ended up taking the first one that accepted me, but I still went to the other interviews just for experience before I had to tell them that I couldn't make it. But yeah, I had done it. I'd gone from not knowing how to code, and now I had a job as a data science intern. And now I've been working there for two to three months now, and I've honestly learned more in that two to three months than I had in the previous two years combined. And I'm just looking forward to be able to feed that back to you. But by sharing this journey, I'm hoping to have shown you that you don't have to be a genius in order to learn data science. You just need dedication and patience. Dedication and patience, which is something that is not preached that much on YouTube. It's all about work for, for Facebook or Meta within two months. But this is just a different perspective. But still, I hope that you learn from my mistake so that maybe you can do it even quicker than me. If you're new here, I'm Data Nash. I'm from a non-tech background, and I'm hoping to show people on this channel that you don't have to be a genius. If you take your time, you can go from a complete newbie like me 
to one day in a few years hoping to be pretty good at this stuff. So if you want to follow that journey, consider hitting subscribe. If you like the video, like it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.